This video is sponsored in part by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or an online store, make it with Squarespace. What's going on everyone? So today's video is going to be a little bit of an experiment. However, if you're watching this, it means the experiment probably worked. I just found this really cool sample, discarded sample fabric from this place called Reverse Garbage here in Sydney. When I saw it, it was all laid out so that all the different color swatches were aligned in like a rainbow pattern. And when I saw that, I immediately went, I need to make a bag out of that, a rainbow bag. I also bought a bunch of secondhand bag webbing and some zippers to use as well. So this project will probably be entirely upcycled from discarded uh, industry fabric waste. And the plan at the moment is to make a rainbow bag with a little bit of a square bottom and with a zipper at the top. So we'll see how that turns out. Let's go get started. First, let's get this cardboard thingy off the fabric. All right, so here's all the different colored samples and I removed this big white piece of the same fabric as well, which I'll put away for the bag lining. But for now, these little colored samples are destined to become my bag's main outer fabric. There's 10 differently colored pieces of evenly sized fabric here, so I divided them up into two groups of five. I'm going to stitch these five pieces together to become the bag's front and these five together to become the bag's back. To to attach each strip together, I started with the color that'll be on the edge. That's this blue color. And then I grabbed the next color along and I flipped it over so that it's facing right sides down. I laid this green strip directly on top of the blue strip so that the two fabrics are right sides facing each other. And then I sewed a straight line down this edge here. And unless I mention otherwise, all the seam allowances that I'm going to be using in this project are 3 eighths of an inch. Or if you're using metric, that's about one centimeter. Once that straight line was sewed, I pressed the seam open with my iron. And with the two pieces unfolded and both facing right sides up, the two joined strips look like this. So then I continued joining strips of fabric in the same way as the first one by flipping the next strip in the rainbow over, placing it on top of the previous strip right sides together, and then sewing down this edge here. Once I had attached all five pieces, so these five pieces will make up the front of the bag, it looked like this. The edges ended up a little bit wonky because not all the samples were exactly the same length, but I'll fix that up just in a moment. So I repeated those exact same steps with the other five pieces and I've actually ended up with one piece that looks very much like a rainbow, like a nice pastel rainbow, and one piece that's more of a subtle muted grayscale rainbow, which honestly I really like. Both sides of the finished bag will have a different feel to them. Rainbow pastel party on one side, all business on the other. So then I just neatened up the edge Edges of the two pieces, making them into proper rectangles without any wonky edges, as well as laying one on top of the other to ensure that they were both the same size. So that gave me two rectangles of identical dimensions. So this is how the bag's outer part is all gonna come together. All right, I have my two rectangles, both with the same dimensions. One will be the front of the bag and the other will be the back. So I'll make the brighter pastel rainbow one the front and the muted rainbow the back. To give the bag a square bottom, I'm going to need to cut out two squares from the bottom left and right hand corner of both pieces of fabric. The bigger the square cut out, the larger the bottom of the bag will be. I'm just going to cut out a one inch by one inch square because my rectangles are both only about nine inches by 11 inches and I don't want a huge bag bottom. So this is me just chopping out those little one inch by one inch rectangles now from both the front rectangle and then I did the exact same thing on the back rectangle too. I then placed the two pieces right sides together, matching up the top edge, side edges, and the corner cutouts. The next thing that I'm going to do is to sew them together through both layers on the right side and the left side and the bottom edge. However, I am not going to sew on the corners or over the top edge. With some sewing clips holding the two pieces right sides together, it's time to get sewing. Again, I'm using a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and making sure to go carefully over the bottom edge in particular because of the joined strips. So I'm making sure that the seams between each strip remain pressed open because if they're not, it might end up looking a little bit bulky when I'm done. Then to box the corners, which remember, I didn't sew over yet. What I do is to pinch the fabric on either sides of the opening like this, pull it out diagonally like this, and then with the seam here opened up, you can press it open, but I'm just gonna hold it open with my fingers. I then sew it over the corner like this. And 
and then I repeated the exact same thing for the other corner. With both of the corners now boxed, I can now turn the bag the right way around, pushing out the corners, and it looks like this. This is gonna be a pretty cute bag, I think. Now let's put this aside for the moment and get started on the bag's lining. So remember that big piece of white fabric from before that was also attached to the sample sheet? Well, I'm going to be using that piece for the bag's lining. So what I did was to cut out two rectangles from this white fabric to the same shape as the two rectangles that I used for the main outer bag fabric. And I also cut out one inch by one inch rectangles from the bottom corners of both pieces as well. Now I'm going to attach attempt to add a zipper to the lining before I sew the lining up or put the lining in the bag. So first I'm going to choose a zipper that suits the bag the best. I ended up going with this peachy pink zipper. And the zipper is approximately the same length as the top of the bag, but if you're following this tutorial, you can also use one that's longer in length. Not a problem. Now this is where my little experiment starts and where if you're following this tutorial, you should stop. Now, I'll tell you when to start again. So of course, first without any instructions to follow, I totally messed this up, but I messed up confidently. I managed to sew the zipper on really well, but just upside down. And I don't want an upside down zipper. That is not helpful. So then I had to unpick everything. And unfortunately in my unpicking, I accidentally damaged one of the lining pieces. <sighs> So I didn't have enough of the white fabric left to cut out a whole new lining piece. So I just replaced the top of this lining that was damaged with some new strips of fabric. So that's why this lining piece now looks like this. But that's not really a problem. I just want it to be structurally sound and it doesn't really matter too much what it looks like because it'll end up on the inside of the bag anyway. So I still have two lining pieces with squares cut out. We're back at that point. And remember that one of my lining pieces due to my failed experiment now looks a bit janky, but structurally it's still identical to the other piece. So if you're following this tutorial to make your own bag, resume from here. Okay, next on both the lining pieces, I'm going to draw a temporary line onto the right side of the fabric. I'm using a chalk fabric pencil to do this and I'm going to draw the line one inch below the top edge parallel to the top edge. So it's a little bit hard to see the faint chalk line on the camera, but that line is right here. Next, I'm going to lay my zipper facing down with the left edge of the zipper aligned with that temporary chalk line. Then I'm going to sew the zipper on to the first aligning piece by sewing a straight line down here. Now, important to note that because I wanted most of the zipper to still be visible from the top of the bag, I sewed the zip right at the edge of the zipper tape like this. However, if you did want a more invisible zipper, you could sew it on a lot closer to the zipper teeth. After that was sewn on, it looks like this. Then I grabbed my other lining piece, which is this one here, and it already had a line drawn across it, one inch down in the same spot as the other one. I placed this piece right sides up, upside down in comparison to the other piece, with both the top edges parallel and next to each other like this. Then, and I'm gonna do this real slowly so you can see what's going on, I folded the fabric that's above the sewn on zipper down below the zip like this. This makes sure that the other edge of the zipper, this edge, won't get fabric caught up underneath it. And then I flipped it back around, making sure to keep that bit of fabric folded out of the way. You can press it or pin it if you want, or just hold it out of the way with your fingers like I'm doing here. And then I moved this lining zipper piece up to the other lining piece, matching up the unsewn half of the zipper with that line that was drawn across the other lining piece. And I'm going to sew it on in the exact same way as the other half of the zipper. I clipped the zipper in place at the ends just to make sure I hadn't messed it up again before sewing. I recommend doing this just to check, but nope, that's right. It should look like this. So now onto sewing the zip on completely. Again, I'm sewing the zipper on by stitching through way over at the edge of the zipper tape. And let's check what it should look like at this point. With the lining fabric right sides up, the zipper should be facing down. With the lining fabric wrong sides up, the zipper should be peeking out through the middle. And two little nice pieces of right sides out lining fabric should be next to the zipper like this. Okay, time to finish off this lining part. First, I unzipped the zipper halfway. Then I folded the two layers so that they were right sides together again. And I also folded the zipper down towards the bottom of the lining. Basically, I made sure that the top edges of both lining pieces lined up with each other. 
Then I clipped the two pieces together, matching up their sides. And next I'm going to do the same thing that I did for the main part of the bag, which is to sew down this side, this side, and the bottom of the bag. But do not sew the corners yet. The side seams should now hold the zip in place, as well as creating new zipper stops if the zipper that you used was longer than the top of the bag. Now, I'm just going to box one corner. It is really important that one corner is left open because that's where the whole bag is going to be turned through later. So I boxed one corner in exactly the same way that I did before and the lining is now as finished as it's gonna be for now. So I put that aside and I began working on the bag strap. The bag webbing here was also found at the same place that I found the rainbow fabric, reverse garbage. I measured out the correct length for it. I want it to be a crossbody messenger style bag. So I basically just threw the uh, strap webbing over my shoulder like this, figured out where I wanted the bag to sit, and then I cut it to this length. Now, I don't think that the dark green color of the bag webbing will go super well with the pastel rainbow color of the bag. So first, I'm gonna change the straps color by covering it with another fabric. This fabric here, I'm using a black woven cotton poly blend that I also thrifted once upon a time. I cut off a strip that was the same length as the bag webbing and approximately 2.5 times its width. I then placed the webbing on top of the fabric strip like this and I folded one edge down over the webbing so that it was almost covering the webbing. And and I clipped this in place and then I sewed it on like this. Then with the other raw edge, first I folded it up once like this and then I folded it again down onto the strap. It should hit somewhere in the middle of the strap. And I sewed it in place like this. With this nice new bag strap made, it's time to sew it on. So I grabbed the main outer bag piece once again and I flipped it onto its side so that the side seam of the bag here was facing up. I placed one end of the strap down onto the side seam with the rest of the strap going down and I clipped it on to hold it in place. I attached the other side of the strap onto the other side seam on the bag in the same way, making sure that the strap was not twisted in between both ends. Then for both ends of the strap, I sewed a straight stitch with a one quarter of an inch seam allowance here. I also sewed over this a couple of times backwards and forwards to make sure that the strap was very well attached as this is the point of the bag that will face a lot of tension so it's important to sew it on well. With the strap sewn on it looked like this. This is actually starting to look like a bag huh? Next I bundled up the strap to keep it out of the way of my needle like this and I secured it with a uh, we'll use a hair tie because that's all I can find right now. It's finally time to sew the lining to the bag. First I made sure that the main bag fabric was turned right sides out and that the lining piece was still inside out. Then with the zipper on the lining piece totally unzipped I pulled the lining over the outside of the main bag piece. I made sure to match up the side seams on both the main bag and the lining bag and the top raw edges of both should also be aligned. Then I clipped the two layers together all the way around. And before we sew them together, let's just do another check. It should look like this. And now I'm going to sew the two together by going all the way around the top of the bag using a straight stitch. Important note, you want to absolutely make sure that you're only sewing through two layers at a time, not all four layers. Because you'll be sewing around the top in a circle, you'll want to hold the bottom fabric down out of the way while stitching. Okay, now here is the exciting and the most satisfying part of this DIY. Or, because it's a total experiment, the oh god, I hope this work part. So I'm going to be turning it all the right way out through this teeny tiny hole in the lining here. Wish me luck. So this took a while and I had to be very gentle because I didn't want to bust open any of the seams, but I eventually got the bag all the way turned from that tiny corner hole. Phew. <laughs> With the lining still out of the bag, I'm going to stitch that corner hole closed. I did that by folding the raw edges of the corner down inside the lining like this and then sewing over the top very close to the edge with a top stitch. Now I can finally push the lining down inside the bag 
and it's looking very bag-like at this point. Now, there's one small thing that I wanted to fix. At the moment, the top of the lining is peeking out of the bag here. Now, you might like this look and want to leave it here, that's totally fine, but I want it hidden. So I pushed the lining down a little bit more, rolling this seam here so that the lining is slightly out of view when looked at from the outside. I then pressed this edge with an iron to keep it in place and then top stitched all the way around the top of the bag. I'm using this edge stitch sewing foot to help guide me. Okay, so this is technically a blind hem foot, but I'm using it as an edge stitching foot here. And I'm using that to stitch as close to the edge as possible while keeping a straight line along the top of the bag. And that is it. It's time to see how this experiment went down. experiment turned out really super well. I love the pastel-y pastel rainbow-ness of this bag, but there are a few little things that I would change if I were to make it again or if I make more, which I'm definitely gonna do. The first one is that I'm going to put pockets inside. I don't know why I didn't do it on this one, but I would love um, a couple of little pockets so that I can separate, like have separate sections for my phone and my lipsticks, etc. so that stuff is a bit more organized and not just floating all around freely in here. The second one is that I would really like to to um, do an adjustable strap next time. I didn't have the materials for that this time. What are they like? Sliders, whatever they're called. But I would really like to have an adjustable strap because while it fits me like perfectly if I wear it crossbody, if I wear it just on one shoulder, it's a bit too long. So it'd be good if I could just like adjust it and make it a little bit shorter. And the third one is this fabric is weird. I don't think this fabric's gonna be super long lasting. It kind of snags on things and then the threads pull out and it starts looking a bit janky. And that's already happened a couple of times on this bag. I'd never used this fabric before, so I didn't really know what it would be good for. But that said, I'm definitely still gonna get a lot of use out of this. And anyway, once the bag's all worn out, I'll cut it apart and make something else out of it or use it as scraps for stuffing or something like that. So none of it's gonna go to waste anyway. So before we finish, I am bringing back the lovely Luciano um, because we have an ad to read and he's real good reading ad copy. Um, so welcome to the camera, to the YouTube, Luciano, the fiance of the Annika. Oh God, <laughs> that was the creepiest intro. <laughs> I'm here. Hmm? You know what that means. What? It's time for an ad. I'm the spoonful of sugar that makes the ad go down. All right. Tell me about Squarespace. What is it? Well, let me tell you about an analogy for Squarespace. Okay. When you're making sourdough, you need a starter. It's mm. like that kind of uh, stuff, that funky stuff that you need to make sourdough. Squarespace is like that, but not for bread, for websites. Wow. It's the website you need to make your website. Have you ever gone on a website and thought, how does a website come to be? Yeah. Well, when a mummy website and a daddy website love <laughs> each other very much, no, that's not it. It's not like biology. It's like sourdough. So how does the sourdough analogy have anything to do with Squarespace's beautiful designer templates? Well, we have a podcast. I don't know if people knew. Probably not. Yeah. But we do. Go to Annika's website, click on the little podcast thing, and you'll find it. Link here. And guess guess what we use to make Annika's website? What do we use? A wall of Squarespace, suckers. <laughs> no, and it's actually very easy to use. I use it to put the podcast up, because it's my job, so mm -hmm. I do it about 50% of the time. 40% of the time? 20% of the time. <laughs> and, and when I do, I actually can do it, which is quite amazing, because I'm really bad at using the computer for anything. Mm -hmm. And like, I am actually legitimately bad. Mm -hmm. That isn't uh, for comedic effect. I struggle, but not with Squarespace because it's very, it's got the drag and drop design. It's very intuitive. You go, yes, I want some audio here. So yeah. then you go click in the section and you're like, okay, I'd like audio, you, like, please. Put in audio. And then it comes up with all the things you need to fill in about the audio, formats it so that the correct information gets sent to iTunes. I don't know how any of that works, but they do. But if you're confused about something. If you're confused about anything, there's 24 seven award-winning customer support. Even Sundays? 
The day yeah. of rest? The day of, re- <laughs> the, day of <laughs> the rest of our Lord. Squarespace doesn't even rest on Sundays, guys. <laughs> it's very Christian normative. Let's stop this conversation about religion. This is not <laughs> what my channel is about. I think the best way to do this ad would be getting to a discussion of religion. Comparing religions, for example, which one? <laughs> what if I'm a budding capitalist who wants to sell my wares? What do you have to sell? I have to sell wonderful, great, and sundry products, and I want to bring them to the virtual marketplace well, for all to enjoy. If you would like to do that, Squarespace, <laughs> whatever you're selling sounds highly sus, but I'm sure. <laughs> as long as it isn't something that would be on the black market, you can sell it on Squarespace, <laughs> because it's easier to set up an online store with Squarespace. Very easy. You're still bound by the laws of the land, you can only sell legal goods. But Squarespace will make it very easy to sell them. So if you have any need for a website, if you're ready to start a new business... Which you do, let's be honest. Let's be honest. It's 2018, who doesn't need a website? (laughs) Then make it stand out. Yeah. Use Squarespace. And I've got a promo code for you. So go to squarespace.com to start a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch your website... Yes, which I am. (laughs) I've taken the free trial. I love it. What's next? Then you can go to squarespace.com forward slash Annika to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Excellent. Squarespace.com forward slash Annika. Support the companies that support her channel. And another really good way to support this channel... Is what? Send us... (laughs) You look so concerned! Send us livestock in the mail? No, don't do that. Send us bars of gold by wire transfer. So an actual way that you can help out is for the next three or so weeks, I'm going to have a little promotion on my DFTBA store, which is where I sell merchandise for my channel. That stands for, don't forget to be awesome. Yes. The store run by the good old... The Green Brothers. The good old Green Brothers, Hank and John. So find the link for that in the description box below. And while you're there, you will see things on special and special bundles of items as well that you can get for super cheap. Oh, cool. Uh, There's lots of stickers and patches, which pretty good for if you go on back to school back to uni you can put the stickers on your sewing machine you can mm-hmm. put the stickers on your books you can put mm-hmm. the patches on your bag or on some jackets mm-hmm. be the coolest kid in school yeah yeah it's it's legitimately it's good stuff yeah uh, it's made in an ethical way mm-hmm. the Rack certified is... factory is where the patches are made mm-hmm. and the stickers are all printed in the usa and so are the posters yeah and patreon is also another way you can support me go to patreon.com forward slash annika victoria and yeah. uh, support me with as little as one dollar a month it's a That'd good way nice. to support me and if you have learned anything from my channel if you've learned to sew um Pay you haven't forward. had to pay for a sewing teacher you've learned some tips or tricks so you just like me in general then <laughs> I should just always have you there pointing mm. at me. Silent hype man. Except that I talk all the time. That's patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria. Wink. Okay. Down you go. Bye. Wow. <laughs> Bye. <Ooh. laughs> Thank you so much to all of my supporters on Patreon and Ko-Fi for making these videos possible. To support this channel with a one-off donation, go to ko ficom forward slash Annika Victoria. Or to become a monthly supporter, go to patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria.